Hello. So a while ago, I created a video showing how to show different translations in your app using the GitX framework. But if you're not a fan of GitX or you just don't use it, then you might want to try a different library that's specific for language translations and that is called Easy Localization. So this lets you add different translations to your app and display them in your app very easily. So you can see here, I have a app. It's a very, very basic app where I just have a screen here with some text and then I press the button and I go to another screen where you have different options to switch the language between English, Portuguese, Hindi, and Vietnamese. This text will make more sense once we actually add the code for easy localizations. Okay, so you can see I have four different languages here, English, Portuguese, Hindi, Vietnamese. Right now these don't do anything, as you can see. So in the home screen, let's go back. We just have a couple of text widgets and we have a custom button that I created called a cheetah button. So you can see here, we just pass in the text when pressed. We set the background color and the text color here. And in the language screen, you can see we just have our text and four buttons here with spacing. Okay, and that's pretty much all our app is doing right now. So you can see in the main screen, we just have this here. So before the video, I added the easy localization library here and I added the provider. So the app currently is not using provider, but you'll see why I added this in a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the documentation and you can see we have our easy localization docs here. As you can see here, it doesn't have a lot of stars, but it's a very, very good library to use. Okay, so let's go down here. They kind of walk you through the process of creating the feature in your app. The setup is very easy. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to copy this line here. So let's get rid of the arrow function and I will do this and then I'll copy that into here like so. And before I continue with this part here, let's add our translations to the app. So I'm going to go to the asset folder and I'm going to create a new folder I call it translations. And then I'm going to create our first translation file for the English language. So down here, I'll say EN for English and then US dot JSON. So that's the format that you want to put your translation files in. If you don't put it in this type of format, then the library won't actually recognize what this is. So this is the format of a locale. You can also do new file en.json. And then in the docs, you can see I have assets, translations, and then en or en us. Okay. So that's language code and country code here. So creating the actual translations is actually pretty easy. You just create a JSON object here. Okay. So now you need to decide what text in your app needs to be translated. So back to the home screen, I'm going to keep this the same because this is the name of the library. I'm going to keep this the same because that's my channel name. And I'm going to translate this text here, this button text, and this text and the four button text here too. Okay. So back to the home screen, let's go look at the text here. So I'm going to copy this text and make a JSON object before that text. So I will name that. Let's name it a home description. And then you put colon and you just put in the string here. And this should be double quotes, double quotes. Okay. And then for the button text, we have switch language. So let's go back and copy that. Make sure you copy and paste your string. Don't just type it in in case you make a mistake. I've done that a few times before. So I'm going to call this one home BTN for button text. Okay. And now to the second screen, I need to get this text here now. So let's go to the languages and then I will name this one 
let's say languages underscore uh, description, I guess, description. So you get the idea. So I will do these four buttons and I will skip ahead a bit. Okay, finished. So I just call these language button English, etc. So now I want to copy this block here and I'm going to create a new translation for Portuguese here. So if you don't know what the different options are for the locale, you should go to Google and you could type in, um, let's type in locale codes. So this is a good site to go to if you don't know what they are. So you can go down here to Portuguese and you can see the different codes here. So I would do Portuguese Brazil here. So PTBR. So I'm going to say new file PTBR.json and then paste that into here. And then I want to do Hindi. So let's go to Hindi here, H I I N. Okay, and that's it for the file names. So let's go back and I will copy this into the Hindi file and the Vietnamese file. So it's really important that these keys are the same names in all your different files. If they're not the same, then when you try to reference these keys, then it won't update correctly. So the EN is done. Let's go to the Hindi. And I like to use the Google Translate site. So we can go here. Copy translate.google.com and we can go to Hindi and then I just copy and paste. Okay, so you get the idea. So now I'm going to go through for each of these and I'm going to do these by myself so I don't bore you and I will see you in a second. Okay. I finished the translations here. So you can see the Hindi, Portuguese, and Vietnamese. Now we need to finish setting up the easy localization library. The last part of the setup includes going back to the main file and we need to add that to the material app. So it'll be above the material app. So back to the docs here, you can see here that we wanna wrap the app in the easy localization widget here. Okay, so I'm actually going to copy this part and paste it here. Okay, so let's import that. Add our parentheses. Get rid of the comment. So you don't need to use a fallback locale if you don't want to, but I'll just keep it here. Okay, so for the supported locales, that is all the locales that you support in your app. So the English US locale and the H I I N and then locale. Then we want to put in the Portuguese P T P T B R and then V I V N. Okay, so the more locales you support, the more locales you'll have here in this array. So that is it for the basic setup. We added this line here and we added our locales with the easy localization widget. And our path is set to assets translations. Okay, pretty simple setup for a very powerful feature. So next we need to tell the app which text widgets need to be updated when the locale changes. So let's go to the home screen and actually first let's go to the docs and you'll see down here, they give you a good example right here. So you do your text widget and then the name of the key value in your translation file, then dot tr. Okay. So I'll show you how that looks. We are translating this text here, right? So let's go to our file and copy this key value and replace this text with that key value. And then we just say dot tr parentheses. And you can see here that you might get an error and that's because it doesn't know what this dot tr extension means. 
So to fix that, we just actually import our package here. So copy this and put it into the home screen up here. And you can see the error is now gone. So let's do the same for the button home BTN text. So let's go down here, put it here and dot TR. Now go to the language screen and we want to replace this. So that is the language description, copy, paste, dot TR, import your package. Then we'll do it for each button too. Dot TR, second button, dot TR, uh, third button, dot TR, and fourth button. Oops, here, dot TR. Double check this real quick, English, Portuguese, Hindi, Vietnamese. Okay, so let's reload to see if we have any errors. And if you get this error here, it's probably because you forgot to do something that is very easy to forget. You probably forgot to tell your app that that translation asset has been added. Let's go to the pub spec and you need to add your translation location to the asset. So down here, we'll do dash assets translations and that's it so i'm doing flutter run again okay so i'm still getting this error ah so i just noticed what the issue is um up here in the translation i put an underscore instead of a dash so this has to be exactly the right format so this should be a dash a very very easy mistake to make so we have, okay, so this should work now. These are all, oh, I did it for this one too. Okay, so underscore, let's do dash. Yeah, and the error actually makes a lot of sense because it's looking for this particular format here, but I had an underscore. Okay, and there we go. Let's go to the language screen. And now we wanna add some code to the unpressed property here. So changing the locale is actually pretty easy. So we can do context dot, and then we want to say locale equals locale. And then we just add the locale here. So we add it as the same type of object that we have in our main here. So we can copy this and put it into here. And then I'm going to copy and paste this three more times and then get the correct locales. So let's get our Hindi. And that is the third option. So make sure that's correct. And then get our Portuguese. And then put it into here. And then we wanna get our Vietnamese. Copy paste. Okay. So now every time we press a button, we will update the locale. And the cool thing about context.locale is that the change is persistent across your app launches. Let's restart. And now let's go to switch language. Let's go to Portuguese. Boom. But this is not Portuguese. This is Vietnamese. So I put that in the wrong spot. I had a feeling I would do that. Let's go back up here. That's probably because I put these in, ah, I put these in the wrong order. Let me fix this and I will come back in one second. Okay, now these should be correct. Yeah, sorry about that. I was rushing a bit earlier to get these in there. So let's restart. And I can see we have Portuguese here and we have Portuguese here too. So we can switch between that and Hindi, Vietnamese, English and so forth. Okay. So one thing about this current setup, uh, let's restart again. You can see we have Portuguese here, right? So 
if I go to the next screen and I change it to Hindi, you can see Hindi is here, right? But if I go back to the previous screen, I still see Portuguese. So that's because this screen is not being notified of the language change. But if I uh, relaunch the app, so if I do a hot restart, you'll see that Hindi is here. So we need a way to tell this first screen that the language has changed and to update the widgets on the screen. So that is why I added the provider package. So this next part will mostly be setting up provider in the app. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a controller. So let's minimize all this stuff. New folder controller. And I want to say new file and I will call this language controller dot dart. Okay, and then I will create a class language controller extends change notifier. And this is going to be a very, very simple controller for the app. So I'm just going to say one language changed. So it's basically like a callback. Then all I'm going to do here is call notify listeners. So you can actually like put whatever you want in your notifier. I'm just doing this to make it as simple as possible for this video. Okay. So when the language changes, I want to call notify listeners. So let's go back to the languages. And at the top here, I want to call that from the controller. So in my build, I'm going to do our context dot read. And then import our language controller and we need to import provider. I'm going to go to the provider docs real quick and just copy the import here, put it into here. And while I have it copied, I'm going to go to the main file and put it into here. And I also want to put it into the home screen. So right here. Okay. So for the languages, I'm going to create a local variable. So language controller, controller. And now I want to call that controller method when I update the locale. So let's get rid of this arrow function. Let's do this. And now after I do this, I want to say on language changed. Okay. So down here, we'll do the same thing here. And instead of here, copy. So now every time we change the locale, we will call this controller method. So now we need to go back to the home screen. And now we need to tell this widget to update when the locale changes based on that one language changed function here. So doing that is actually pretty easy. I'm just going to rebuild the entire thing. Um, it's not that efficient. You might want to just make a custom text widget and put the consumer inside of here. So up here, context dot watch language controller. So all this is doing is telling the app to watch this controller. And when we call notify listeners, this is a listener. So this entire home widget will be rebuilt. Okay. And the last thing to do is to add the controller to our main file. So back in the main file, we're going to go up here and I'm just going to copy and paste this to make it faster. We're going to add a multi provider up here. So we will do this here and I will wrap that around the easy localization. So like this. Let's import this and we'll add our controller here. So it'll be language controller and that's it. So let's try and test this out and see if it works. So hot restart. And I forgot to close the parentheses here. Hot restart. So now you see we have Hindi here, right? So let's go to the next screen and change it to Vietnamese. You can see it changed here. Let's go back and you can see it changed here too. So we can switch between each one, English, English. So using provider or get X or block is a great way to let 
the previous screens in your stack know that the language has been updated. You're likely already using a state management solution like provider block or get X. So you might not even come across that issue. So there's more that you can do with easy localizations. I might do a part two on this video in the future. For now, I think that covers what most people will use this library for. I hope it helps you out in your app. So yeah, stay tuned for the next video and happy coding. Bye.